Hi guys! Recently I was hiring and I had a position open on my team for a social media manager role. So I've personally received a hundred of resumes and I've personally sifted through every single one of them in order to find the right candidates to move to the interview process. And every second resume was making certain types of mistakes and I caught myself thinking, I wish I could tell them what they're doing wrong with their resumes. And instead, I decided to make this video. In this video, I'd like to show you some of those resumes and talk about the mistakes that they make over and over again. And I will try to explain why I declined 99% of them. I will also show some stellar resumes and talk about what they've done right, so make sure to stick till the end of the video not to miss some of those rockstar resumes. The purpose of this video is really to let you into the mindset and into the head of the hiring manager to show you how they think and how they make decisions when they go through hundreds and hundreds of resumes. The actual thinking in the selection process will differ depending on the hiring manager. And another thing to note, I was operating alone, we did not have an HR manager or a recruiter helping us go through the resumes, which is the case for many small and medium-sized businesses. And by the way, if you have been hired in the past, let me know what are the most common mistakes that you see being made in the resumes. First, let me talk a little bit about the job description. It's the single most important thing a candidate should be paying attention to in order to land an interview. It actually tells you everything you need to do in order to land an interview. In the end of the day, when the hiring manager looks at your resume and it's not clear to them how your resume and your experience compares to the one in the job description, the hiring manager will skip right through it. So this is a slightly modified version of the job description to preserve confidentiality of the company. It's not fancy at all, it's actually pretty standard. You see here that we have a little blurb about what the company does. The role overview is important for two reasons. One, it helps you get a general vibe for the role. And two, it kind of gives you a sense of what it would be like working at the company. Then you have the who you are section, which tries to describe the ideal candidate for the role, what kind of skills you should have and what kind of personality would excel at this role as well. The next section is really important because it gets down to the meat of what you need to show in order to land an interview. These are the key things to pay attention to because many hiring managers will compare your resume experience against the responsibilities list. Generally speaking, if you see that your competencies and experiences fit at least 70% of requirements on the resume, you're good to go. So you want to make sure that your responsibilities on the resume match the ones in the job description as much as possible. This will actually come up later in the video. For the context of this resume, what I care about the most here is that you can manage social media channels, you can manage content calendar, you're analytical and can work with other teams. Next, we have some hard and soft requirements for the role. They need to have three to five years of experience, they need to work with some platforms and so on. There are very many inferences and assumptions that the hiring manager makes when they're looking through your resume. So your job as an applicant is to reduce the number of those assumptions that they're making. And the story that the hiring manager reads from your resume is the exact story that you want to tell. All right, so let's start with this one. The first thing that comes to sight is the age of the candidate. People, do not put your age in your resume. Nobody wants to know how old you are. In fact, if you put your age in the resume, you might expose yourself up to conscious or subconscious ageism where people might decide to pass on your resume just because they think you're too old or too young. While generally I'm a fan of writing out a couple of sentences about your objective and your highlights of qualifications, I'm also a big fan of being hyper-intentional about what you're writing in here. I would stay away from saying how enthusiastic or motivated you are because honestly, as a hiring manager, I already assume that you're motivated and enthusiastic. The same goes for things like team player, works well under stress and so on. Everybody writes those things on their resume, so they mean practically nothing. Second sentence, it says that the candidate is looking for a job in the advertising industry. And our our business is far from that industry. Oftentimes, intro and objective is always about the candidate. Me, 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 me. What I want to encourage you to do is to flip that. Think about what strengths and what specialties you have and how your specialties and strengths can help the employer achieve their own objectives. Do not talk about how the company will help you push you out of your comfort zone or gain experience. Sadly and truthfully, they don't care about that. This person seems to have done a lot of different jobs, many of which have nothing to do with social media. That's the number one mistake 70% of candidates make. They put all of the experience on their resume, regardless of how relevant it is for the job that they're applying. Why is this person really applying for this job if they've never worked in this role? Does the candidate even know what this job entails? The list of jobs is also in the ascending order, so they've put the oldest job first. I've removed the dates for the confidentiality reason, but typically you want to put your most recent job up top because that's the one 
one that matters the most and the most relevant. And lastly, I have no clue what this person did in any of these jobs. What were their responsibilities? What did they do and achieve? This is just a plain list of jobs held with no context. And since I know there are many more candidates I need to go through, I choose to reject this resume and move on to the next candidate. And by the way, this video is sponsored by The Career Deck, a project that Anna and I have started recently. If you are looking to craft your resume, build a compelling personal pitch, build out your job search strategy or prepare for your next interview, we are doing career coaching sessions. We will review your resume, share feedback and help you build a stellar resume. And if you're a little farther ahead, we will help you practice and prepare for your next interview. Check the link in the description for more info. This one is a wonderful example of how your experience may actually hurt your job application. This candidate has a great set of experience. They've clearly been there, done that. They meet the years of experience required, or actually, do they? So I can't tell whether they did several jobs at the same time, whether they were freelancing gigs and so on. So make sure to always put approximate dates for when you worked at so that the hiring manager can get an idea of how much experience you have in specific functions. I love this person's summary, actually. It clearly states their experience and expertise. They also talk about how much experience they have. So I guess that's a good one. And what strengths they have. It's clear that this person loves analytics, but let's dive into the experience. May I remind you that we're looking for a social media manager. This person's experience is everything but social media management. You see, they did advertising, brand management. One of the roles they've had was a head of marketing. This actually confuses me. If this person has held a head of marketing role, why are they applying to a social media role, which is a couple of steps down from them? Will they be happy in that role in the first place? There are just way too many questions that arise from going through this resume. Remember, your job is to make it very clear that the role you're applying for is ideal for you. Minimize the number of questions that the hiring manager might have going over your application. And with that, let's move on to the next one. This one is actually a very solid resume at the very first sight. It's well organized, it's structured, generated 70% more engagement, at least 150% more open rates. This is music to my ears. This person is not just talking about their area of responsibility, they're also talking about the achievements and the impact they've made on the role. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. I want the person that makes the difference in the role. This is the single best thing that you can do with your resume in order to ensure you're gonna land an interview. But this person was still rejected. Let's talk about why. Let's see. Remember, this person is applying for a social media role, yet his previous roles were a marketing manager, manager, strategist, account manager. They've done the broad marketing work in which social media was just a small part of it. Now this one is tricky because it can go both ways. As a hiring manager, I might appreciate someone who's much more of a generalist because I expect them to do a lot of different things. But sometimes when I want someone to have a specific skill set and be really good at them, that might actually hurt the application. In our case, we are really looking for someone who's passionate about social media and has spent a few years solely focusing on that. Always pay attention at the job description and try to understand, is the employer looking for someone who is a bit more of a generalist who can do a little bit of everything, or they're looking for someone who's more of a specialist who can do one thing really, really well? And tailor your resume accordingly. Let's move on. This one is another solid resume, actually. It has a great format, and based on the amount of experience in the resume, I can see that this person doesn't have the required experience I'm looking for. I also wish this person shared a little bit more about their achievements and what they're proud of in these two roles. In this resume, they just listed their responsibilities. What this person did well, though, is they added their volunteer experience, which shows that they are proactive and they love working with people. Even though the experience is not directly related to the job application, it tells a story about the candidate and volunteering is generally very positively regarded, especially when you don't have enough experience. All right, moving on to this guy. This guy really stands out for me so far. First, they're the first one who submitted a cover letter along with their resume, and it's certainly catching my eye. First, he starts with, I share your pain, I'm not your typical candidate. That's interesting. Keep reading. So they tell me here that they have some of their core competencies like marketing, automations, operations. It looks solid. But then again, 
I'm looking for a social media manager. All I want to know in the end of the day is, are you capable of managing social media accounts? Can you manage and build content calendars? Have you done this before? Okay, so um, here's the resume itself. First, there is a picture on the resume. In Canada and in North America, we generally try to avoid putting pictures on your resume. You never know who's on the other side of the hiring table and whether or not they can consciously or subconsciously discriminate or choose not to hire you just because of how you look. Do not add a picture on your resume. Next, this person does a lot of things. Senior consultant, marketing, IT. You're saying you feel my pain in hiring but I don't really think you do. Clearly, you seem to be doing everything but the job that you're applying for. Look, this is a tricky one because it's one of the most common pitfalls that immigrants fall into when they arrive to Canada. They're eager to put their best foot forward and share as much experience that they have to show how qualified and how amazing as a worker they are but oftentimes it hurts the applicants more than it helps them because it just confuses the hiring manager and makes them doubt whether or not you can actually do the specific job that they want you to do. Okay, this one is easiest so far. This guy is applying for a social media role, but their experience is not even close to the role. Insurance, screening researcher, I get it. Sometimes you want to make a career transition and you're looking for a job that you've never worked at, but you still want to show that you have some professional passion or interest or some shape or form of experience or training related to the role that you're applying for. Tell the story that you want to tell with your resume. If you're transitioning, make it clear in your resume. Don't make me wonder why an insurance claim representative is applying for a social media role. Explain it to me, inspire me, tell me why you're potentially the best person to fit this role. Let's move on. Okay, this is a really good resume, one of my favorites so far. I love almost everything about it. They clearly state who they are and what they do in their summary, but my favorite thing is how clearly they highlight their accomplishments. It's so easy to see because they put it in bold. Absolutely wonderful. I can clearly see how important they were. They also held multiple social media manager roles and they have just the right amount of experience. They even have an accomplishment section and I absolutely love it. This guy is a hustler, he's results oriented. And I see that clearly without having to read that in their summary that they're a top performer or results oriented. I just clearly see it in the resume. This resume is an example of misalignment of experience. This person states here that they're looking for an entry-level position, while our job description states at least three years of experience in social media. This is a pass right away. All right, this one. Honestly, I get a little upset when I see resumes. Like this person clearly put a lot of effort into crafting their resume and making sure that a lot of their experience is highlighted. This person has wrote a big cover letter too. They wrote just one letter and did not bother adjusting it for what may be the most important things to talk about for the specific role that they're applying for. They're just blasting the same exact cover letter to the dozens of job applications and that just doesn't work. The unfortunate reality is that the average time a person spends in the resume when hiring is just under seven seconds. And if you cannot show the hiring manager that you're qualified for the job within that time, that attention is lost. They have a hundred of applications to review and they don't have a lot of time. They want to get over it quickly. On this channel, we talk a lot about qualities of Canadians. And one of the biggest qualities of Canadians is risk aversion and conservatism. They like to eliminate risks and also hire people like them. And the first way to filter out people like you is actually through your resume. Are you following a standard Canadian form? format of a resume. And if you aren't, you're probably not following other Canadian standards either. So if you want a job in Canada, make sure that you follow the standard Canadian format. We will leave the link to our resume templates in the description box below. And if you want our help in crafting a resume, book a coaching session with us. We'll spend some time getting to know you and your experience and we'll help you craft a rockstar resume. This is an example of a great resume. He is hitting on a lot of points right, it's easy to read, the about section is straightforward, he's creative and witty and has generated 10 million of views, so that's actually a big impact straight up. Diving into the experience, this person focuses on achievements and the impact they've made. This is what a hiring manager wants to hear all the time. Not that you can do your job and follow the instructions that are given to you, but how well can you do it? Good job on this one, definitely going to interview him. Next one. 
Earlier in this video, I stressed the importance of paying attention to the job description and trying to match your resume to it. Well, this person overdid it. It seems like they just copy pasted their resume from a job description and that's it. No personality, no achievements, no summary. I'm just looking at a job description that I created. This is just another plain general resume among the other dozen that I've seen so far. Am I going to want to talk to this person? Probably no, because this person does not stand out. This resume is not memorable. It doesn't show achievement or even the slightest passion for social media. This is an interesting resume that I like to show you. There is one thing that sets me off with this one, and it's the way it's formatted. All roles are listed here briefly, and then there's this thick section of roles and responsibilities. This is an unusual format, but it's not clear which roles relates to which responsibility. It's best to stick to organizing your jobs and responsibilities together. What I do like about this resume is these two things here. It's the superpowers and what they're most proud of. This makes the person stand out, actually. They talk specifically about what they're really good at, and they talk about the things that they're most proud of, which talks about their achievements. Those two parts tell me more about their personality and what kind of worker they are than anything else on this resume. And that's it for today. I hope you've learned a handful of do's and don'ts on how to build your resume. And if you have any more tips to add, make sure to head to the comment section below and give me some of your pro tips. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button so that more people can see this video or share it with a friend who's currently fiercely looking for a new job. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.